All right, let's move on to topic number two. So um, earlier this week, I think it was this week, all the days run together on the channel. But uh, anyway, topic two is pirate ship complications. So I did a video um, about the website pirate ship. So uh, I had not heard about it. A lot of people after I did my video said I've been using it for over a year. Um, and I just heard about it over the last couple of weeks. And basically what it is, again, is it is a website. It's a third party website that allows you to um, get discounted uh, like, you know, 40 up 30, 40 percent off of, you know, quoted prices. Um, I, I sell a lot um, as my collection comes in and out and shipping prices have been insane. I, I mentioned it in the video that, you know, I'm needing to send a couple boxes back to um, Singapore uh, for XM. And yeah, I was quoted each box was $2,000. And so they're like, you know, I still have those boxes. I haven't shipped them yet. Cause like, they're not going to pay two thousand four thousand dollars $4,000 to ship back a statue. <clears throat> um, and so, and again, it was an early prototype had some damage. So anyway, I found this pirate ship and I started shipping some things last week. And again, the prices were, were phenomenal. Um, but then people started chiming in uh, a couple different groups and stuff that that people had posted that the issue is, is so you could, there's an option to to pay for insurance and that's what I did I, I paid for the insurance um, it's through a, another third party insurer insurer but from what other people were saying is is if you have breakage <clears throat> then it's it's basically pirate ship statue because th there it's under their account where you are buying it from buying buying the shipping from so the, the statue would be shipped back to them or the the claim could be done back by them <clears throat> now i've not ever dealt with that personally um but do you guys see that as being a major issue of using a website like that um, I've, I've heard a ton of people say that they've used it for a year they've had no problems really great experiences but i was curious as to what you guys thought would you guys use a service like that would you take the risk? Because even dealing directly with UPS and USPS, I've filed claims and almost I never get my money back mm -hmm. because of all the hoops and the things you have to jump through. And even when I've provided all that stuff before, <clears throat> specifically to UPS, I did all the photos. The buyer did photos. We showed photos and videos of the packaging, the me packing it up we provided, and they still denied the claim. And, you know, it was, you know, a thousand dollar statue. So even direct, going directly through these companies, you're still not going to get your money back necessarily. So how do you guys feel about like a pirate ship or a, there's, there's a couple other ones out there, but uh, I'm curious as to what you guys think. Well, to be honest, I'm kind of already taking that risk because I ship where I work because they've got a great corporate discount. But if I filed a claim, you know, I'm using their account number. So the money would go back to them as a credit. It wouldn't come to me. So I'm already taking a risk every time I ship from work, but it's a great price and that's why I do it. Yeah, um, personally, I never add the insurance. I don't declare the value because the higher value you declare, the more the shipping costs, which is what I asked you, Chris. I wonder if Pirate Ship is actually calculating on their website the actual cost of an um you know the value of the statue um i take it to where if something happens to the statue i'm a stand-up person and if your 800 statue 800 statue breaks i will pay you back i guess 800 dollars um yeah just because i hear of the stories that you don't really get the money back from ups you don't get the money back from the post office it's it's a whole process and it's not in your favor so why spend the extra money on shipping and insurance? I probably surpassed that anyway in what I saved by not insuring it for more money. So, mm -hmm. so as far as, as as for pirate ship, um, I'm still hesitant with them. But if that's the only negative that they don't cover insurance claims, I I'm tempted to use them just to save on the shipping costs. Because like I said, I think over time the money you're saving on shipping, if something does happen in the future. It might negate itself mm -hmm. in the long run. It, that's if you don't ship a lot of things. I'm talking about like shipping like one or two statues a year or whatever it is. 
Yeah, and like, you know, some people said, well, you know, they, they ship hot toys with pirate ship or things like if it was like a smaller package, like I definitely would not hesitate because like, I mean, what's the likelihood of, of, of a, a hot toys figure getting broken? Um, and maybe that happens from time to time. I think st with statues, you're at more of a risk. But even like I think of like knowing which company you're shipping. Like, again, I've been shipping XM lately and I've never seen packaging so, so, you know, well done in my life. So like the way it's designed with the straps and the, <clears throat> you know, I haven't had anything broken, period. And the, again, these are secondhand. Um, and so I wouldn't hesitate using Pirate Ship for XM. There might be maybe some companies that I don't feel like it maybe is as good um, with their packaging. And maybe I would, wouldn't want to take the risk, but I had never heard of that of not declaring the value. Um, and I didn't realize that that makes the, the, the price go up. I've never done that. Yeah, the more value declare, I, I, that's true for UPS. So the more you put that the package is worth, the more the shipping price goes up on it. I mean, it, it, your, your package can go from like $40 to like $80 or $90 if you go from saying it's a $100 package or a $900 package. So if you were... Let's let's use your eight hundred dollar example. Let's say you sell an eight hundred dollar statue, but you're you're the type of person that can't really afford just to refund that. You know, you don't have the extra cash laying around to do that, even though it's the right thing to do. Would you recommend that people go through a direct service in something like that, or do you still feel like they're still not going to get their money back no matter what? I, I don't know. I I've, personally, I've never had to file a claim. Um, but I, I just hear the stories of how hard it is to get your money back through a claim. So UPS is like trying to jump through three rings of fire backwards. It, it's UPS. I, I would advise you not to even bother the insurance because you're just yeah. pissing in the wind. Mm -hmm. Have any, has anybody had any luck using FedEx? I did hear that brought up that the yeah. FedEx might be the better option. Yeah, so I don't know if you want to bring up the person. So supposedly, um, have any of you guys had to file claims? Because I'm just speaking of what I hear. So if you guys I know. Have. Okay. UPS. So what, you tell me if I'm right. So what I hear from UPS is if you file a claim, they come actually to your house and take the broken whatever it is statue in this instance and inspect it. Uh, with FedEx, they don't do that. They just ask that you take a picture and send it to them, and then they approve it. Is that correct? or? Yeah. yeah, I had somebody file a claim on something that or want money back on something that I should. Actually, it was my Thanos, my big Avenger set. They claimed that it got broken and sent picture. And yeah, I went to the UPS store where I shipped it and bought the insurance. And they were going to have to go to this guy's house and inspect it. And this guy never arranged for them to come. And I, I went, you know, this went back and forth for, for months. He wanted money and I, I didn't send him any money. Uh, it just felt off, yep. you know, and the damage was minimal. It was like on the base and. Uh, Did he want a full refund or like would he have, would he, have want, he, he wanted a partial? full refund on that statue. I mean, that's he wanted the thing all is, that money back. <clears throat> I, and, and, I, had to, and I said, you want the money back. I can't give you the money back till I get it from them because, yep. you know, insuring those seven pieces was, or shipping them with insurance on them was almost $800. And I, I told him, I said, they have to come. Well, I'm busy and I'm working and I'm like, if you want this back, you're going to have to set up a time with them because, you know, they're telling me that the claims person has said that they have called them like 10 or 15 times trying to set up a time. And they've actually gone a time or, time or two and nobody's there. Mm -hmm. So I said, it just doesn't something, you know, if it's really damaged, I don't understand why you or someone can't be there to let them see it. I've, I've had very similar experiences with this, almost the exact same thing. And it's very frustrating because again, if you do everything on your end that you're supposed to do <clears throat> and you have to rely on somebody else, it's just, it's, it's, it, 
it's a crappy situation. Um, and again, I've never shipped with FedEx. Have any of you ever yeah. shipped with FedEx? I mean, I, I try not though, but it comes down to, so, so FedEx is usually more money than UPS. So is it worth it to pay more money, you know, every time you have to ship a statue and I mean, how, how often do you have broken statues? If, I mean, if you have them that often and probably shouldn't be shipping with them to begin with but um i mean i, I would probably still go through ups just and like i said you're you're, you're saving money because it's cheaper and you're saving money not having to pay the extra money for the um the value and the insurance on them so i think it's in the long run it's worth it and see that's where, I, that's where i would go through pirate ship then yeah or yeah, yeah just now using pirate ship i mean i because, think you, you'll yeah, bank you enough money it. that if something does happen it might equal out so yeah, I mean, if I can get 30 to 40% off of, you know, a UPS price and it's, I'm still going through UPS. It's like UPS ground. Yeah. So say, <clears throat> say you uh, save 40% per statue that you would normally ship. You ship about eight statues and say you bankroll, you save almost $700, $800. There's your money. If something ever goes wrong on one statue in the future. So. Yeah. I mean, and it's saving the, the buyer money <laughs> I mean, you're yeah. not having to charge them as much. Yeah, my go go through with the sale quicker <laughs> they're i mean they're they're the ones paying for it um i mean it's jeff, a gamble. Like, jeff you send a lot of um cgc's mm -hmm. would you would you send a cgc let's say through a pirate ship or something like that i guess you you mentioned your own your own uh, business you know we send it through the business but would you always, would you do that i've always done cgc's through the post office and occasionally through fedex i've never shipped a, a cgc through UPS. I don't know why. <laughs> but you do um, priority, right? The priority boxes. Yeah, I uh, use priority yeah. mail and sometimes global priority. And I have shipped some very expensive comics and I've never had a problem. Yeah. Which is, I guess I'm lucky. Well, there was one time <laughs> I shipped uh, about $8,000 worth of comics to an auction house. And um, I the post office delivered it to a furniture store down the street from the auction house. Oh. So it took about three Whoa. days to figure that out. Three very agonizing days, but uh, we finally figured out what happened. You got, you got to bomb proof the package. I, I, I did that video for Chris, but I'm not even joking. So like when it comes to comics, if something was worth like thousands of dollars, I actually create a crate within the, uh, the shipper box. I will go to home Depot, get, you know, pieces of wood and create like a wooden box and then put the you know the the bubble wrapped or padded comic book thing. Basically, they could step on the package. They're not going to put their foot through it. I mean, they would have to drive a forklift through the package to damage right. it. If I'm sh shipping something that expensive, I just create a giant pillow of bubble wrap around it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go with the coffin method. <laughs> I was going to say, if you if, if you've never seen that video, you guys have to check that out because it's it's crazy. Well, that's uh, just the cool. bubble wrap. I'm talking when I when I go more expensive, like like Jeff said, like a high end book, like five thousand. I I would box it and then put it inside the the flat rate box. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, Edwin Diaz is asking about DHL. Uh, that's another. I just have never used them. I don't even know if we have a DHL place in our hometown. I've never used them either. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, Edwin says that nah, nah, Eric backs his uh, D Labs like baby Pampers. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny the way I love it, but it, Hey, it's, it's, it works. It absolutely works. And they float in water. So if there's ever a cargo <laughs> ship tips over, like they have been recently, your, your package will be floating. Yeah, there you go. Uh, a, a tangential issue. Say that again. Can I bring up a kind of a similar issue? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of buyers um, are frustrated if they, the international buyers, if they ask you to list the item as a gift or to list the value as zero yeah. so they don't have to pay extra fees. Yeah, all the, the problem is The problem is if, if I walk into the post office with a $2,000 comic book yeah. and I insure it for $2,000, but I declare the value as zero, yeah. the person behind the counter looks at me like, really? <laughs> You can't do that. So I always tell the buyer, I can I can declare it as zero, but then I can't insure it, and I leave it up to them. That's good. Good advice. Good. You know, it's I. I don't know. I I again I struggle with international 
you know, I, I even we had a statue break in shipping. It was not, you know, either one of our faults. It shipped, it went to Canada, but it, it was just a giant hassle and we didn't get the money back. Like, again, it was through UPS and it was just a nightmare, yeah. um, you know, with the claims forms and everything else. And I wish it was simpler. I wish it, you know, it, but I just have not had a good experience at all doing international and it's so expensive. Um, I haven't done it for statues. I've only done it for comics. So that, that probably helps. Yeah. But these boxes, you know, especially the boxes I deal, deal with are just massive. But I don't know. It's just it's just a big deal. But anyway, I, I did want to bring this up again about, you know, using a third party because um, some people in the community did bring that up um, on YouTube and also in Facebook. Um, and I, I hadn't even thought of that. I hadn't even, you know, whenever I clicked it and paid for that extra whatever, eight or ten bucks of insurance or whatever it was. I thought it was good to go. I thought it was the insurance through that company. But then after looking at it again, it is insurance through a third party. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, whoever you buy from, if it's, you know, if it's a third party, they are the one that owns that account and they will get the money back. I mean, I I think it's worth rolling the dice to save the money. Um, But the only thing I don't like, and I don't know if it's true or not, is if something goes wrong with the package, they said it goes back to, pirate ship and not to the original yeah. shipper. So I don't, that I don't like. And that I don't like. And I, I've not confirmed if that's true. It, Me either. So I don't it know seems like it would be because they would be their, you know, their account. account but but it, all right. So you, you've used them before. So when you create the label, is your name not on the return address? It is. It's And it's okay. a, it, like, I, again, it was a UPS ground label. It's the exact same label. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a UPS label. Yeah. So that's, that's why I do wonder, like, you know, I maybe pirate ship would have to deal with the claim, but at the end of the day, the addresses on them on the package itself are our addresses. Because it's the same thing with PayPal. Like I told you guys, I use PayPal uh, ship now, and you save money using PayPal compared to just using uh, UPS. And I've had things shipped back to me for certain reasons, and it comes back to me. It doesn't go to PayPal, so maybe that's not true. So you know, again, this is new to us. Um, we don't have all the answers. Um, so if you have had experience, um, let's say you're watching this video a year from now, please leave a comment down in the comments <laughs> because, you know, we would like to learn from this. Again, Hold on. <laughs> there's, what were you going to say? I was going to say, Jeff brought up a good joke and it's funny. He goes, they are called pirate, <laughs> pirate ship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they steal your stuff. So. <laughs> I got an email from them today asking about how my, my experiences and they said, uh, it's like, you know, we don't want to be known. We don't want anybody to think we're scammers, but we are pirates after all. Yeah. You know, I thought that was kind of funny that they, they, they at least are playing with their own name. You know, they have a sense of humor about it. So um, anyway, uh, so again, this is kind of an ongoing story. We're going to kind of watch and see how it goes. Uh, hopefully nobody has to deal with a claim, um, but it does happen from time to time. Again, I feel like overall these statue boxes are pretty good. And that's why I want to bring up one more thing. People hate, hate keeping boxes. They hate keeping the styrofoam. They hate keeping the brown shippers. But if you guys even minutely might have the chance of ever shipping anything, do not have UPS pack your statue. Keep the statue boxes, guys. I know they take up a lot of room. They're a hassle. But at the end of the day, they're designed to keep that statue from breaking. Or even so, if you think you may have to move. Right. Yeah. Trust me, because that it's a pain. Giant it's, pain. It's and a it's pain a giant to pain pack to keep, them up. But, it's a giant pain to keep the boxes. But at the end of the day, yeah. yeah, I mean, again, a lot of people say, well, God, Chris, I've never sold a statue in my life. I mean, even Matt said, You've, how many have you sold or, or shipped? I've sold one. The only other things I've ever shipped was something to return or damaged one to Sideshow. But let's say let's say it's um, you know ten years from now and you have a different hobby, would yeah. you have wished that you had kept all the boxes? And I, I keep my still right, I and I know you do. But I'm saying like I'm saying like to the average do? collector, if you had all these statues that you like, you're somebody like Matt that hasn't really sold very many. You keep you keep what you buy. Yeah. Then let like, ten years. Let's say well now I'm into cars. Now I'm into motorcycles or whatever or travel, and I'm gonna sell all these statues. Well. If you don't have those boxes, it's going to be near impossible unless you live in maybe a big giant city where there's a lot of collectors and you're and you know there's a lot of local buyers. Yeah. But 
I, and not I, not to bring up like a sad topic or what you know, bad <laughs> tragedy topic, but uh, somebody brought it up in the groups. God forbid something happens to you, and now your family has to get rid of these statues. Yeah, they're gonna need the box to sell them. The statues I, aren't the statues aren't forever. Sometimes they have to get sold. So I've got a video coming out this week, and I bring that exact th that exact thing up. It's like God forbid something happens to you. What the hell is your family gonna do with these things? They're not gonna. I mean, more than more than likely, I, like my my family. As soon as I'm out the door, yeah. boom, there are these <laughs> statues are gone. Sayonara. That's be, crafting be, room. Yeah, that's to be a brand new <laughs> day after the brand funeral. new video game yeah. room. Or in the ground, it's a craft room. That's right. <laughs> Even but, if you were to move, say, and you want to bring it with you, the box you would need to lay out each piece and try wrapping them is going to be yeah. even bigger than the shipping box it came in. It would be nuts. And so again, just like just. You guys got to bite the bullet and keep the damn boxes. <laughs> that's that's my that's what I'm going to say about it. The funny thing is, we really only need one box. <laughs> the one we Everybody go. Everyone get rid of their boxes, but every, you know, except one person has to keep each one. Then they have to ship it whenever somebody, get, you know, either has to move or wants to sell the statue, and then that person keeps it until the next person. So we just need a community <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> no, we, yeah, no. Every person would. It wouldn't be one person keeping all the boxes. But if one person kept a you know a box and then would ship it to the next person that needed it, we could have only one box for each statue going around the country at least. It could be one person in each country, maybe. You might be onto something. See? There you go. And just think like to ship an empty box wouldn't be that much. Yeah. So it wouldn't. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I love it. That's actually, you know, as crazy as it is, I love it. And you the the truth is you could really you could get rid of your boxes. And then you could say, I know um, Eric has this particular statue and I'm selling mine. Hey, Eric, if I give you 50 bucks, will you ship me your box and I'll send it back to you? Actually, the, 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 the buyer of, of it, mine, will, will agree with him that he'll send it back to you or whatever fee you come up with. You I could would do that. Yeah. I say I love it. But Ryan says the BSC Ooh. box sharing program coming right. soon from the Brotherhood of the Bat Collectibles. I Rent the that. box. That's Rent that's the box. Great. There you go. Uh, I like uh, Forenzi says uh, Sideshow and XM should sell boxes to customers. That's yep. also not a bad idea. You know the fact that it's like okay everybody gets rid of their boxes, you get you you get all that storage room back, or you don't have to pay for a storage unit. Yep. And then as soon as you say, well, you know, I am ready to sell. You know, I've enjoyed it for 10 years. I'm going to hit up Sideshow. They're going to charge me 40 bucks to send me an empty box. I'm going to have to register that domain before somebody takes it. Rent a box, or rent a statue box .com. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I know, I know that that can never happen because, again, all these are custom made for that statue to be shipped in the first place. Um, I can't imagine them having a warehouse of empty styrofoam. You know, I mean, that would be ideal, but that would be it would be nice to not have to worry about the boxes. But again, I do, I do recommend. And again, I think that we absolutely should start the BSC box sharing program. So Jeff, <laughs> you're a genius. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to work on that behind the scenes and see what we can get going for you guys. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Dan says it sounds like a custody battle with statues. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, thought Jeff was going to talk about a coffin for a second. That's well, what I thought. <laughs> you, yeah, you only need one know, box, and that's your own when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Mike says, I, uh, I'm actually surprised Sideshow doesn't have a reseller or secondhand program. Uh, they, they, I think they kind of do it sometimes. So <laughs> I think with, if, like, with return, they'll, they'll ship the return sometimes, I think. Uh, but uh, I don't know. It would be nice to have some sort of program in place. Someone's uh, going to make a lot of money someday doing that. And that, that's what happened with comics is people got tired of eBay. And the first website that really did it was Comic Link. They just said, hey, you can post your comics on our website. If it sells, you send us the comic. We get 10%. We do all the paperwork. We do all the, you know, and then we'll send you a check. And they've been going gangbusters ever since for decades now. So, Jeff, what do you think of uh, – see, I've never used them, a uh, statue form. I know you can buy and sell, but I think they make they have like a little bit more of like uh, – it's a little bit harder to get on there to sell things, right? Statue form doesn't have a good marketplace, yeah. um, and that's been one of my problems with that. I'm, I'm on there a lot, as much as I'm on Facebook, 
and it's never made any sense to me why there isn't a good marketplace on that website. Yeah, One of the sure problems is I think that they charge you an extra, they charge you a fee to be able to sell, but you go into that marketplace and there's like eight things for sale. It's ridiculous. Mm, you go into the CGC marketplace. I mean, yeah. in a year's time, they're selling millions of comic do dollars of comics and there's no charges at all. Mm -hmm. Totally free. Man, we got, we have so much to work on. We do. Yeah, we do. We'll have to put some brains together. Um, Johnny, 499 Super Chat. Thank you very much. Ask us a question. Chris, honest question. XM, Batman, White Knight, panels or no panels? Crew, chime in. Um, well, I actually have seen it in person. Uh, and so my personal opinion on it is I actually like the panels. Um, it sucks covering up all that goodness underneath. But I like how slick and sleek it looks with those panels, those long panels. You can still have the guns coming out of them. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, I still have not decided 100% if I'm getting it. I want it. I just don't know if I have the room yet. I'm still going to kind of wait and see how I arrange things. But that's how I would display it, I think. But the great thing about it is, is you can display it like that for a while and then take them off and display it the other way. So. I don't know what you guys think about it. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know how much uh, you know interest you have in that piece. Uh, but panels or no panels, what do you guys think? I would yeah. go. Yeah, I like those. I think they actually add a little bit more detail of a vehicle, which you don't get with Batman stuff typically. I I hate to say it, but I'm a little bit over that piece. I went from it's the best piece in the world to. I don't know. Seeing newer pieces, I'm more excited about other pieces. But uh, yeah, I'd probably go with the panels. Um, I think I think the big the biggest thing is the space. Yeah, it's it's horizontal, which it. I know uh, Delaney, you ran into that issue with Catwoman, and mm -hmm. especially you, Chris, with horizontal pieces. It it's not easy uh, displaying them. It's not. Sure. Uh, you have to have like. <clears throat> A, a like a long garage shelf or something like that you know mm -hmm. those those are helpful uh mike helms just became a brand new member thank you very much i really appreciate it thank you very much we've had a couple of new members tonight so thank you very much for supporting us in that way i really appreciate it and thank you also for that super chat earlier again it all goes back into the channel so thank you very much Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button right here on the screen and check out these two awesome videos. I think you're going to love them. And also please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have you join in all the fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. See you in the Batcave.